I watched all of my friends throughout my entire life be able to dunk a basketball, but not me. So everybody can't do everything. So, you know, some of us make choices. I think it's not a biggest choice um, for others. It was completely outside of my frame of reference. I've been in show business since I was 14. And uh, I've heard the stories mm -hmm. of what happens. And I've seen these kinds of things play out in front of me. In recent buzz, Oprah Winfrey's name has been surfacing for less than flattering reasons. And now, Cat Williams and Dave Chappelle are adding fuel to the fire by shedding light on Oprah and her cohort, Tyler Perry, labeling them as deceitful figures in Hollywood. The whispers surrounding Oprah's shady and malevolent demeanor are growing louder by the day. It all stemmed from Monique's recent revelation, where she expressed her lingering disappointment, awaiting an apology from Oprah for allegedly sabotaging her career. Adding to the controversy, recent reports have surfaced claiming that Oprah and Tyler Perry have been involved in a scheme aimed at demeaning and emasculating black male actors. Merely scratching the surface, whispers abound regarding Oprah's intimate ties with Hollywood's elite and influential figures who not only wield power over the entertainment realm, but also over prominent celebrities. However, amidst this milieu, Cat Williams emerges as a figure unafraid to confront these elites head on. His outspokenness against figures like Oprah and Tyler Perry begs the question, what exactly did Cat Williams say about them? It's imperative to witness this individual's assertions enough times to discern the truth. Some of us are against the Illuminati, and we are against the Illuminati at our own detriment. Mm. When people are against the Illuminati, then they get punched in the face all the time. The press hates them, and nobody likes them. There's been quite a clamor on social media lately regarding the darker aspects of Oprah Winfrey and Tyler Perry's personas. Many fans are calling for a reevaluation, suggesting that these two icons shouldn't be held in such high regard anymore. Rumors about Oprah's alleged narcissism have circulated for years, but they've gained traction recently, especially after Monique spoke out about waiting for an apology from Oprah, attributing her career downturn to her. This prompted fans to delve deeper, unearthing a plethora of questionable actions by Oprah over the years, and how she seemingly evaded accountability with the backing of influential figures in Hollywood. If you're not up to speed on Monique's feud with Oprah, let me fill you in. The saga began back in 2009 when Monique took a stand against going on a press tour for the movie Precious. This film was co-produced by Oprah and Tyler Perry, who were keen on capitalizing on Monique's Oscar nomination buzz by sending her on the tour. However, they balked at paying Monique for her time and effort. Exhausted from her demanding role in Precious, Monique prioritized spending quality time with her family over the press tour. Initially, Oprah remained silent, leading Monique to believe that everything was fine between them. But Oprah Winfrey, you owe me an apology. Mm. See, Shannon, Oprah and I had a private conversation about our mothers. Mm -hmm. This is the part people don't know. Right. I shared with that woman what me and my mother were going through. Now, my mother's no longer here. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. And I shared with Oprah Winfrey what we were going through and how I felt. And I was, you know, you, you trying to balance it out because it's your mother. Your and mom. I shared that with you. And I shared with her my family and what the dynamic was. And you don't tell me you're going to have my goddamn parents. I was getting ready to say, goddamn, baby, it was right there. <laughs> but you don't tell me you're going to have my mother and my father on your show. And you think that that's just okay? And the way you try to apologize in front of a group of women, if you think I've done anything wrong, no, 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 no. you're gonna stop that. Right. And Oprah Winfrey walks around like, I can't be checked. I, no, I won't admit I, to I, that I, I'm wrong. I'm, I'm a firm believer, Mo. No one is beyond reproach. No one at all. So when you keep saying, what is it? I'm gonna keep answering you the same exact. Just a few weeks later, the tablet began circulating stories portraying Monique as a challenging individual, deemed impossible to collaborate with. This narrative unfolded despite Monique's triumph at the Oscars for her role in Precious. Surprisingly, job opportunities dwindled and offers that once seemed promising were abruptly rescinded. It was then that Monique realized her career was under attack, a revelation she candidly shared in a recent interview with The Hollywood Reporter. During this interview, Monique disclosed that Precious director Lee Daniels had confessed to her being blacklisted from the industry. Furthermore, she expressed her expectation of public apologies from Oprah Winfrey and Tyler Perry. To those who might dismiss Monique's claims as exaggerated, it's essential to recognize that her ordeal during the press tour was just one aspect of Oprah's questionable treatment of her. In fact, Oprah's exploitation of Monique's past trauma appears considerably more egregious in comparison. From ages 7 to 11, Monique found herself portrayed by her elder sibling, Gerald, while she simply cleaned up after herself. When Monique declined Oprah and Tyler Perry's request for a promotional tour, 
Oprah, Oprah extended an invitation to Gerald to discuss his portrayal of Monique on her show. Monique's orientation was never a secret. She had previously discussed it in an interview with Essence magazine from 2008, but her difficult relationship with her parents, who had previously disregarded her sexual orientation, was. Oprah was aware of this because Monique had confided in her about her relationship with her mother while getting ready for her role in Precious. You can imagine Monique's dismay when she learned that Oprah had invited both of her parents to discuss her essay with Gerald without telling her. A petty move. Monique recounted how Oprah, in their conversation, solely focused on Gerald and tried to sway Monique into joining him, without mentioning anything about involving the rest of her family. Monique isn't the only individual whose personal struggles Oprah has exploited for her show. Oprah has a troubling pattern of cozying up to celebrities under false pretenses to extract private information for ratings. Numerous celebrities like 50 Cent have publicly criticized Oprah for her duplicitous behavior. 50 Cent once likened Oprah to an Oreo, black on the outside but culturally disconnected on the inside. These remarks came after Oprah chastised him for his explicit lyrics, accusing rappers like him of promoting negativity. In response, 50 Cent pointed out how Oprah, who initially represented the views of black women, has morphed into someone catering primarily to middle-aged white American women, losing touch with her roots in the process. Ludacris found himself at odds with Oprah after being invited onto her show in 2005. What was supposed to be a discussion about his role in the crime drama Crash turned into a public dressing down. Instead of focusing on the film, Oprah seized the opportunity to criticize Ludacris for his lyrical use of controversial language, leaving him feeling publicly humiliated. Many comments were circulating, particularly regarding the tendency to humiliate black men for the sake of ratings. It's noteworthy to mention Oprah's close ally, Tyler Perry, whose films have often been criticized for portraying emasculated black male characters. Recently, a TikTok video featuring actor and voice coach Brandon J gained traction as he exposed Perry for allegedly pressuring him into portraying a gay character. Brandon was initially cast in Perry's sitcom Meet the Browns as Josh, a high school student grappling with bullies. However, Perry reportedly made a sudden script alteration, informing Brandon that his character would now be gay and romantically interested in his former bully. Amidst the scene changes orchestrated by Perry, a surprising revelation emerges. He expresses a desire for Jeffrey's character to be gay, harboring feelings for his tormentor. This unexpected twist deviates sharply from the initial audition expectations. Regarding Tyler Perry's personal life, speculations about his sex orientation have circulated for years, with rumors suggesting he may be concealing his true self. 50 Cent has conjectured that Perry might be projecting his own repressed emotions onto actors in his productions. Monique, why is she canceled? And then I, I know Tyler wouldn't support that. He never told anybody, nobody not to work with her. When I talked to him, he was like, no, nah, I, I never told no one not to work with her. And I said, but you Tyler Perry, and you never told anyone to work, work with him. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, I never looked at it like that. Because I said, you, you just got to consider how, like, how strong your influence is at that point. Furthermore, Perry's portrayal of female characters has stirred considerable controversy with accusations of perpetuating detrimental stereotypes about black women. Renowned director Spike Lee has publicly criticized Perry's films. This critique underscores deeper concerns about the messages conveyed in Perry's work. Ultimately, Perry's character is illuminated by his response to Lee's criticism, encapsulating his approach and perspective. This behavior is precisely why numerous black celebrities, including Cat Williams, have chosen to distance themselves from figures like Oprah and Tyler Perry. Cat Williams once articulated in an interview how the media tends to label outspoken individuals as crazy when they dare to expose the deceit and hypocrisy rampant in Hollywood. All right, let's delve into this without naming names, though we're all aware of certain individuals. There's a pattern that's unmistakable. When someone challenges the established system that a certain figure upholds, they tend to face a barrage of attempts to discredit them. We've seen it happen before. Take, for instance, an incident involving Dave Chappelle in 2006. He was invited to a well-known talk show hosted by Oprah. Chappelle had made a significant decision in his career, turning down a lucrative deal from a major network to pursue a different path, specifically a trip to Africa. Now, instead of engaging with Chappelle's decision in a respectful manner, Oprah seemed bent on belittling him throughout the interview. She continually made snide remarks, undermining Dave's perspective at every turn. Okay. When, I saw when you say you heard the stories, what do you mean? What stories? I mean, you see before, look, Mariah Carey made a $100 million deal, and three months later, she's all of a sudden mysteriously crazy. Or Martin Lawrence punches through, and he's waving a gun on the street, screaming, they're trying to kill me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we hear those stories. And it always happens around the time of their career where it seems as though they're crossing over the next plateau. Yeah, yeah. 
Would you say you lost your mind, sort of? No. No. Not exactly. OK. Uh, I wasn't crazy, but it, it's incredibly stressful. Yeah. And uh, I felt like, in a, in a lot of instances, I was deliberately being put through stress. In fact, there was a moment when Oprah attempted to push Dave Chappelle into a corner, insinuating that he had somehow lost touch with reality. It was a blatant attempt to paint Dave as irrational, simply because he dared to make a choice outside of the mainstream. This behavior, sadly, is not unique to this incident. It's a tactic employed time and time again by those who wield significant influence, seeking to maintain their grip on the status quo. Inquiring about Cat Williams' absence on The Oprah Winfrey Show, reveals a curious absence, especially considering Oprah's current stance. Delving deeper into the matter, it becomes evident that there's a lingering distrust towards Tyler Perry, as Cat has consistently voiced his reservations regarding him. When questioned about the perceived agenda of the media and Hollywood elites to emasculate black men, his response was insightful. He pointed out that Kevin, amidst the scrutiny of wearing a dress, remains unfazed. He highlighted the tradition of men in entertainment who have donned dresses before him, citing examples like Big Mama's House and Medea series. At the end of the day, Kevin doesn't have to worry about what people are going to say about him wearing a dress because of the long line of dress wearing people before him. <laughs> so now we have Big Mama's House 1, 2, and 3. Yeah. I've never seen Medea in a pantsuit. I think she wears dresses. So now I'm saying, why are we picking old poor little Kevin Hart? Because it was his turn. He acknowledged a segment of society's resistance against perceived control by the Illuminati, noting the repercussions faced by those who oppose them. He emphasized that individuals like Dave Chappelle, who refuse to align with such influences, are often shunned by mainstream media. Moreover, Cat Williams delivered a startling cautionary message to Dave Chappelle regarding the purported efforts of Hollywood elites to suppress him due to his recent remarks. The situation begs the question, what precisely is unfolding behind the scenes? In his latest Netflix special, comedian Dave Chappelle fearlessly tackled transgender jokes despite facing criticism for his previous remarks on gender identity during his 2021 stand-up performance for the streaming service. Premiering on December 31st, The Dreamer showcased Chappelle's unapologetic approach as he not only acknowledged past controversy, but also reinforced his views on the transgender community. One particularly talked about moment from the special emerged when Chappelle shared an anecdote about visiting Jim Carrey on the set of the 1999 film, Man on the Moon. During filming, Carrey adopted a methodical approach to embodying the persona of real-life comedian Andy Kaufman, steadfastly maintaining character throughout. When Chappelle encountered Carrey post-shoot, the crew instructed him to refer to Carrey as Andy. In jest, Chappelle quipped about limiting mentions of transgender individuals in his special, suggesting it wasn't worth the ensuing controversy. I wanted to meet Jim Carrey, and I had to pretend this was Andy Kaufman all afternoon. And he was clearly Jim Carrey. I could look at him and I could see he was Jim Carrey. Anyway, I say all that to say, that's how trans people make me feel. Chappelle recently mentioned his efforts to repair relations with the transgender community through a play he's writing. The play centers on a black transgender woman. It's a poignant story ending in tragedy as she succumbs to loneliness due to the inability of white liberals to understand her. In a lighter vein, Chappelle also quipped about California prisons accommodating inmates based on gender identity, suggesting he'd identify as a woman to land in a women's prison if ever arrested. He recounted an incident where he was confronted on stage by an LGBTQ individual in 2022. Humor reflecting on the media's response. This isn't the first time Chappelle has faced backlash for his remarks on the LGBTQ community, recalling his 2021 stand-up special where he touched upon J.K. Rowling's controversial statement about transgender women. In 2019, she made headlines by staunchly defending Maya Forstater, a British researcher whose job contract wasn't renewed due to her controversial remarks about transgender individuals on social media. She argued, dress however you please, call yourself whatever you like, sleep with any consenting adult who will have you, live your your best life in peace and security. But force women out of their jobs for stating that sex is real? The author expressed her support through hashtags I stand with Maya and this is not a drill. Then in June 2020, she retweeted an opinion piece addressing the terminology around menstruation, taking particular issue with the phrase people who menstruate. She remarked, people who menstruate? I'm sure there used to be a word for those people. Someone help me out? She continued to express her perspective, emphasizing that isn't acknowledged as real, the concept of same attraction loses its foundation. Moreover, she argued that denying the reality of 
effectively erases the lived experiences of women worldwide. While she affirmed her support and love for transgender individuals, she underscored that discarding the notion of hampers meaningful discussions about many people's lives. Contrary to being hateful, she maintained, it's essential to acknowledge the truth. She elaborated on her own empathy towards transgender individuals, explaining how she has felt a connection due to shared vulnerabilities to male violence. She asserted that advocating for acknowledging the reality of doesn't equate to hatred towards transgender people. Rather, it's about recognizing the unique experiences shaped by being female. She concluded by affirming every transgender person's right to live authentically, while also asserting her right to acknowledge the impact of her own experiences as a woman. Following her remarks on gender and Rowling faced a barrage of hate messages and death threats, leading to the hashtags trending on social media. Subsequently, she was branded a TERF by the LGBTQ community, which stands for Trans Exclusionary Radical Feminist. The backlash resulted in calls for the cancellation of Rowling. In response to the controversy, comedian Dave Chappelle weighed in, expressing support for Rowling by stating, I'm Team TERF. Chappelle asserted the belief that gender is a biological fact, highlighting that every human being on Earth is born through the process involving a woman. However, his remarks regarding transgender gender women's genitalia sparked further controversy. And they've canceled people that are more powerful than me. They canceled J.K. Rowling. My God, J.K. Rowling wrote all the Harry Potter books by herself. She sold so many books, the Bible worries about her. <laughs> and they canceled her because she said in an interview, and this is not exactly what she said, but effectually, she said, gender was a fact. And then the trans community got mad started calling her a turf. Following the release of the special on Netflix, a surge of individuals took to social media to voice their criticisms and call for the removal of the special. Gladly, Netflix stated their policy against content that fuels hate or violence on their platform. However, it's evident that anti-LGBTQ content often does just that. Trans activists highlighted Dave Chappelle's erasure of black trans individuals in his portrayal of the debate as one between black rights and trans rights. They also contested Chappelle's portrayal of J.K. Rowling's transphobia, arguing that he misrepresented its extent. David John, executive director of the National Black Justice Coalition, urged Netflix to eliminate a particular special highlighted in Deadline. With 2021 marked as one of the deadliest years for transgender individuals in the United States, particularly among the black transgender community, John emphasized Netflix's responsibility in combating transphobia. Perpetuating such attitudes only serves to escalate violence. It appears that Cat Williams has now stepped forward to shed light on the repercussions, unveiling the concealed realities with in Tinseltown. You know what the number one job of somebody that sold their soul in Hollywood is? What? Is to act like it didn't happen. They all do the same job. Why do you think Gary Owen can't cross over and he already white and been in comedy for 25 years? If what I say ain't the case. It's a cabal, it's a, it's a consortium. They, they rock with who they rock with and they don't with who they don't. But I'm not scared of being the competition any more than you were when you lined up uh, uh, across from a superior team. Yeah, on paper, they're a better team. Right. They have all the assets and resources and we don't. In a frank admission, he revealed the audacious tactics employed by producers to silence Chappelle's bold voice, resorting to shameless threats. But that's not the extent of it. They stooped to the tired strategy of painting him as unhinged to undermine the potency of his message. Meanwhile, speculations abound among conspiracy theorists following comedian Dave Chappelle's revelatory remarks in a rediscovered interview with the esteemed James Lipon. According to certain conspiracy theorists, Chappelle might have just painted a bullseye on his back for none other than the mysterious Hollywood elites. Fearlessly stepping onto the stage, he unleashed a blow that left jaws dropped all around. Chappelle's cryptic remarks ignited a whirlwind of conjecture, sending the rumor mill into overdrive with extravagant tales of covert gatherings, cryptic symbols, and clandestine agreements. Could there truly be a concealed motive lurking beneath the surface of glitz and glamour? Are shadowy puppeteers manipulating the trajectory of fame, deciding who ascends and who fades into obscurity? In the eyes of conspiracy theorists, Chappelle's audacious declarations have marked him as a target. They speculate that by challenging the established order and daring to address taboo topics, he has attracted the attention of those who thrive in secrecy and shadows. Supporters contend that prominent individuals, such as Oprah Winfrey and Tyler Perry, who have played significant significant roles in shaping discussions on gender and 
contribute to the increased awareness and sensitivity regarding these subjects. They recognize the necessity of promoting inclusive conversations. However, Chappelle argues that excessively prioritizing certain issues may unintentionally impede the comedic process. The apprehension of facing criticism and potential cancellation could discourage comedians from delving into meaningful discussions about gender and perpetuating an atmosphere of self-censorship. According to rumors circulating on the grapevine, Tyler Perry is reportedly advocating for a certain agenda due to speculation about his sex. It's been suggested that Perry, allegedly gay, is using his past marriage as a cover-up for his true identity. The individual who first brought these rumors to light is a content creator named Walter Lee Hampton, who discreetly discussed Perry's sex. According to Hampton, Tyler Perry has reportedly disbursed substantial sums to safeguard his secrets, invoking non-disclosure agreements with individuals privy to Perry's personal affairs. Perry's efforts to conceal his undisclosed aspects have amounted to millions of dollars. Another notable figure seemingly advocating for the transgender community is Oprah Winfrey. While Oprah is widely revered as a philanthropist and humanitarian, presenting herself as a champion of the underprivileged, there exists another facet to her persona that may surprise many. Dave Chappelle, the comedic maestro has long been aware of Oprah's concealed agenda. Beneath Oprah's outwardly kind persona lurks a tangled web of controversy and deception. For years, Dave has dedicated himself tirelessly to unveiling her true nature, and it appears he's now poised to reveal the truth. However, Dave must proceed with caution, mindful not to disappoint his devoted fans, particularly his fellow African Americans who hold him in high regard. Yet, if Oprah indeed harbors secrets, it's imperative the world becomes aware. Let's shine a light on the shadowy side of Oprah. Rumors have circulated in Hollywood, suggesting she may have played a role in shielding infamous predators like Harvey Weinstein and Jeffrey Epstein. Multiple public figures have openly criticized Oprah for overlooking their wrongdoings. Actress Rose Marie, renowned for her fierce advocacy against societal injustices, has accused Oprah of embodying insincerity and endorsing a harmful power dynamic. Adding to the controversy, Oprah's contentious association with Epstein has sparked suspicion and fueled conjecture. Speculations circulating online suggest Oprah might have assisted Epstein in selecting his victims. Some fans even assert that her Florida residence was raided due to alleged involvement in a global human trafficking network. Despite Oprah's efforts to dismiss these rumors on Twitter, claiming them to be baseless, the truth often finds its way to the surface. In another twist, Chappelle disclosed how Hollywood elites exert control over creative individuals. Dave has indeed criticized Hollywood's treatment of black comedians in the past. He holds a strong belief that Kevin Hart, a comedic powerhouse in his own regard, wouldn't have achieved such monumental success if he hadn't compromised his principles and agreed to perform acts he had vowed never to do. In a recently unearthed interview, Chappelle, renowned for his sharp humor and candid remarks, revealed that the industry had attempted to coerce him into wearing a dress. He inquired of his fellow comedian whether he had faced similar pressures while navigating the entertainment industry and if there were any boundaries he wouldn't cross. Moreover, Cat Williams also talked about it. It is possible that there isn't anything funnier than a guy in a dress. And if that's the case, then it might also be said that there's nothing funnier than a black guy in a dress. Despite Hart's previous denials of encountering such scenarios, a year later, his appearance on Saturday Night Live surprised many as he adorned a dress, contradicting his earlier stance on such acts. Fans and critics accused him of compromising his principles for fame. Despite his prior success and undeniable talent, the incident sparked debates about the sacrifices one must make to succeed in Hollywood. Meanwhile, Chappelle, a vocal critic of Hollywood's manipulative of practices has exposed the industry's attempts to control him indefinitely. He has shed light on the dark maneuvers of industry figures who sought to exploit his name and image across all platforms. In accordance with contractual agreements, the notion of a conspiracy surrounding the coercion of black male entertainers into wearing dresses on screen before attaining fame has been a persistent subject of debate. In the midst of a storm of sensational tabloid gossip alleging Dave Chappelle's descent into crack addiction and a mental collapse, the comedian vanished to South Africa without a a whisper to anyone. Adding to this, Cat Williams has shared his own experiences, bringing further illumination to the issue. Known for his candid and unfiltered comedic style, Williams has fearlessly confronted the truths of Hollywood's darker aspects, openly acknowledging the compromises he himself has been forced to confront. During an insightful interview, William disclosed a significant aspect of his journey within the industry, the pressure to conform to wearing a dress early in his career. This revelation shed light on a prevalent issue in Hollywood, particularly affecting black comedians. It was an expectation placed upon them to portray exaggerated and often offensive
defensive versions of black women, perpetuating harmful stereotypes. So that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section. Stay tuned, and we will catch you in the next video.